everyone, it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video I'm going to show you how to make this cozy with a built-in coaster and it fits any size of your standard mugs. It's super fun to make and the cool thing about it is it fits the 16 ounce jars so you can use it as a jar cozy as well. It's a coaster and a cozy in one. Now you can find this free crochet pattern on my blog and that link is in the notes underneath the video. What you're going to need to make one of these pumpkin mug coaster cozies is of course some yarn. Now this one is made from Red Heart Super Saver and this one is made from I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby. These are worsted weight acrylic yarns, medium number four. And today I'm going to be using more of my Red Heart Super Saver. I'm going to use this little bit brighter orange and brighter green just to get a different color but still stay in the orange and green. You can use any yarn that you have on hand that is a medium weight number four yarn. You can use cotton, cotton blend, or acrylic, or wool, whatever you have on hand, as long as a medium weight number four. Just keep in mind, cotton is better at absorbing than acrylic. For this particular project, I really prefer the acrylic, but of course it's up to you what you prefer. So like I said, any yarn that's a medium number four weight yarn will work for this. We're going to be stitching today with our H hook. The H hook is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You're going to need a needle to weave in your ends, and of course you'll need a pair of scissors. And you'll also need a little button, and the button needs to be about an inch. A little smaller is fine, a little bigger is fine as well. Um, but you just need a little uh, green button and it doesn't have to be green. I've just chosen to use green so that it blends in with the green that I've chosen for my little coaster koozie. All right, and I've got this bright green one for today's project. You're going to need about an ounce of the orange and just a small amount of the green because you just do the trim, the curl, and the stem. We'll be starting on the bottom, work the circles first, and then work our way up the side of our cozy. We're going to begin with our slip knot, and then we'll chain four chains. The first three chains will count as one double crochet, and we're going to stitch seven double crochets in the fourth chain from the hook. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, and go through the second two. So we have our chain three and one double crochet. We need to stitch six more, so we have a total of eight. And we're going to go right in that same chain and stitch those stitches. Chain three counts as our first, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to join to the top of that first chain three. Whoops. There we go. Pull up a loop, then pull that loop through the loop on our hook and chain three. There is row number one. For row two, our chain three counts is our first double crochet. We're going to double crochet in that same stitch. And then we're going to place two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. We started with eight, and so for row two, we're going to have 16 double crochets. So we're stitching two double crochets in each of the double crochets 
around. When we complete it, we'll join to our chain three. I completed stitching two double crochets in each stitch around. I joined to my chain three and chained three. And for row three, we're really just going to repeat what we did for row two. We'll stitch one double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three, and then we'll stitch two double crochets in each stitch around. And because we're stitching two in each of those 16 double crochets, for row three, we'll have 32 double crochets. And this is going to make a nice flat bottom to our coaster cozy and keep our cup from slipping around. We don't want it to be too uh, bumpy or rolly so that our cup falls over, especially if we're drinking something hot. All right, so I'm going to continue around stitching two double crochets in each of the double crochets around, and then again, I'm going to join to my chain three. I've stitched those 32 stitches. I joined to the top of my chain three and chained three. Now, for row four, we're going to be stitching one double crochet in each double crochet, but we're going to be stitching in the back loops only. So if you look at the top of our stitches, you'll see there's two loops. The loop that's facing you is the front loop. The loop on the back of this, or facing away, is the back loop. And we're going to be stitching one double crochet in each stitch around, working in those back loops only. So yarn over, we'll go in that first back loop, and stitch a double crochet. We won't be adding any more increases. This is as big as we want the bottom of our cozy. All right, so one double crochet in each of the double crochets around, working in the back loop only. And as you work, you should see this line right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to make our coaster sit up better with having that line right there, all right? So, for row four, we're stitching one double crochet in each double crochet around, working in the back loops only. I've stitched one double crochet in each stitch around, working in the back loop only, and you should see that line going all the way around and that's the loop that we did not stitch in. When you get to the end and you've stitched your 32nd stitch, do not join. We're going to be forming that opening right here. And so what we're going to be doing is when we get to the end, we're going to chain three, and we're going to be turning. And by turning each row, that's going to cause there to be an opening. All right. So from here on out, for our double crochet rows, we will not be joining. We will be turning. Chain three and turn. So let's do row five. Our double crochet counts as our first double crochet. And we're going to double crochet in the next stitch. And then the next stitch, we're going to do what's called a back post double crochet. We're going to yarn over, and what we're going to do is we're going to go on the other side here, and your post is this portion of your stitch. We normally stitch up here, but we're going to be stitching in the back post. If we stitched this way, it would be the front post. And since we're stitching on the other side, we're going to go around the post on the back. And we just stitch a regular double crochet. We're just sticking it in a different place. And that's going to cause that to stick out a little bit. And that's what causes the ridges on our pumpkin. All right. And the way the repeat will work for this row is one double crochet in the next two stitches. 
and then a back post around the post of the next stitch. Back post, double crochet. One double crochet in the next two. And back post, double crochet around the next post of the next stitch. And we're going to the back side. All right, let me turn it over so you can see how it looks. There's our ridges being formed. All right, let's do another set together. One double crochet in the next two. One, two, and then one double crochet back post. So we'll double crochet around the back post of the next double crochet stitch. And we'll repeat this working all the way around. We'll continue on around and remember we're not going to join. We're going to work all the way around here. Then we're going to chain three and turn. I completed this row, two double crochets, back post, and if you look at it, you can see those ridges, two double crochets, and your back post. When you get to your last stitch, you're going to, of course, double crochet in the last stitch there. You should end with a back post, double crochet, double crochet. All right, so now we're going to chain three. And remember, we're not going to join, we're going to turn. All right, and so now, because our post stitches are on the front of our work, we're going to be stitching two double crochets front post. Our chain three counts is our first, so we'll double crochet in the next stitch. Then we'll front post double crochet around the post. And it makes it really easy to find because we've already done those back post stitches on the previous row. So one double crochet in the next two stitches and then front post around the next stitch. Our stitch count remains the same at 32 because we didn't add or subtract any stitches. We just put our double crochet in a different place. two double crochets, front post, two double crochets, front post. And it's now called a front post because we're on the front side of our work. When we work on the back side of our work and we're stitching that post stitch, it was called a back post. So we'll continue on around stitching one double crochet in the next two stitches and front post double crochet in the next. Working all the way around and remember no joining. I completed that row stitching two double crochets with my front posts in between. Here's my last stitch those two double crochets. My last stitch chain three and now we're going to turn and we're going to repeat what we did on row five. Our chain three counts is our first double crochet. We're going to double crochet in the next stitch and then we're going to back post around that back post. And again, it's a little easier to find because we're placing our back posts in the front posts of the previous row. One double crochet in the next two stitches and then back post around the post of the previous double crochet stitch. And again, our stitch count continues to remain the same at 32 stitches because we aren't adding or subtracting anything. Again, we're just placing our double crochets in a different spot. One double crochet in the next two stitches. <laughs> 
and a back post in the front post from the previous row. There we go. And we'll continue to repeat this all the way around. And again, don't join, chain three and turn. I completed that row of two double crochets with our back posts. Here's my last two double crochets, chain three and turn. And again, we need this opening for the ear of our mug. All right, so now what we're going to do for the next two rows is the next row, we're going to repeat what we did with the front post double crochet. And then we'll do another row with the back post double crochet. So we'll repeat the front post double crochet row with two double crochets, front post all the way around, chain three and turn, and then we'll do another row of the back post, two double crochets, back post, and turn. All right, so we need two more rows, one with front post, one with back post. I completed those last two rows, two double crochets with the front post, repeat, two double crochets with the back post, repeat. When you get to the end of this row, we normally chain three and turn, but we're not going to do that. We're going to cut our yarn. We're not going to chain three. We're going to bring in our green yarn or whatever color that you want to use for your pumpkin trim. We're going to single crochet in each of the double crochets around. So we'll go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through both loops. One single crochet in each of the double crochets around. And again, we'll have 32 single crochets because we didn't add or subtract any stitches. One single crochet in each of the double crochets around. One single crochet in each of the double crochets around. <clears throat> and when we get to this last single crochet, we're going to chain eight. And then we're going to join back to that stitch with a slip stitch. And this is going to give us our button loop. There we go. And I'm going to cut my yarn. And tie off. All right, so now I need to just grab my needle and I need to weave these ends in. And then I'm gonna show you how to make the cute little curl and stem. Oh, and don't forget, we have to add our button. Just going to work back and forth so my button loop doesn't come out. And also being careful not to stitch down into the orange portion so we don't have a little green spot of yarn that looks messy. Alrighty, so here's my button loop. And if you chose a bigger button, you may need to make a bigger loop. That's totally up to you and the size of button that you're going to use. I'm gonna go ahead and weave these ends in and then I'll show you how to make the stem and curl. To make the curl, we're going to make our slip knot and then chain 13 chains. We're going to place three half double crochets in the second chain from the hook. Yarn over, Go in that second chain, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through all three. And we'll do that two more times. All right, so we have three half double crochets in the second chain from the hook. And we're going to do this 
all the way down the chain. And that's what's going to cause those curls. So we're going to place three half double crochets in each of those chains. And I'm only on the third chain that we're stitching in and you can already see that it's starting to curl up. That's exactly what we want it to do. We want it to resemble those little curly vines that pumpkins have. So I'm going to continue working down my chain, stitching three half double crochets in each one of those chains. So I've completed my curl. It's super cute. And now what we're going to do is we're going to chain five. We're going to turn and slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. And then we'll slip stitch in each of those chains working back to that curl. So now we have a little stem and we have our curl. We're going to tie off, but we're going to leave ourselves about 10 or 12 inches so that we can sew it onto our pumpkin. All right, so there's my stem and my curl. To attach your stem and curl to your pumpkin, I like to fold it in half with the opening over here and then sew it to this side. All right, so we have two ends. We have where we began and where we ended. We're going to start with the tail that we left where we ended our stem, put it on our needle. And I'm just going to go right in there and I'm going to make sure that I'm going in a stitch, not a hole. All righty, so we'll just pull that through and I'll just make a couple of loops and make sure that it's sewed on tight. Then I'll grab that shorter edge where we started and you can start with a longer tail if you need to. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go in, make sure it's stitched on nice and securely. And then we'll have to weave these ends in. I'm not going to take the time to weave every bit of it in. I'm just going to show you. Make sure you're going through the green portion of that trim so that it doesn't show through onto the orange. All right. But I'll come back and finish that off later. The last thing we need to do is add our button. I've got a piece of green here all ready to go. I'm going to put it on my needle. There we go. We want to line this up. And if you're making this for a specific cup, it might be a more narrow or a bigger cup, is where you line up your button. I'm just doing the basic one. And if you set it right here, it should line up perfectly. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to set it here. Again, make sure you're going to go through some stitches. And I like to go in, I like to go back out and sort of make a loop. So my thread stays put. And this one has sideways holes for it, so we're going to do that. And this is going to get a little bit of wear and tear, so make sure you give it a lot of stitches. I like to do three or four when I'm using yarn or until I can't get my yarn needle through the holes anymore. <laughs> All right, so then we're going to take those ends and we're going to tie a knot. And again, I've said this many times, when you're tying a knot to hold on a button, you can add a little dab of fabric glue and that will help. And fabric glue is great on yarn because yarn is a fabric and also it goes through the wash really well. If you put a little dab of hot glue on there and then you put a hot drink in a hot cup and set it against that, it's going to get sticky and tacky. 
and we don't want that. All right, so here is the way it looks. Here's our curl and our stem, and here's where our handle goes. This is the pumpkin coaster mug cozy that we just made with the bright orange, green button, and bright curl and stem. This is the one with the rust, and this is the one with the golden yarn. So you can make these in lots of different colors, muted or bright, they're all fun to make. And they're perfect for a fall or Thanksgiving time get together. Put some hot cider, some hot cocoa, or a big mug of steaming hot cocoa.